Hello and thanks for joining me for another video on ancient and obscure equipment. Today I present to you, straight from behind the Iron Curtain, this lovely large leather case. And within this leather case we have, behold, possibly the world's largest and heaviest vibrating reed frequency meter which I think we should have a closer look at. Now you might be forgiven for not knowing what a vibrating reed frequency meter is because they fell out of fashion a few decades ago um, but the simple answer is there, as the name suggests, a means for measuring frequencies by using vibrating reeds. So the way it works is you have a whole bunch of little reeds or just little um, mechanical bars effectively which have a very finely tuned mechanical resonant frequency. So for example the one just below the 110 Hz indicator would be tuned to 110 Hz, the next one to 111 Hz and so on. And all of these are inside a coil effectively. So if you apply a AC voltage to that coil it will generate an AC magnetic field which will then try and mechanically excite all the reeds but only the ones with the, where the resonant frequency matches the incoming frequency will actually vibrate and then it will just vibrate up and down and you can see that visually. And I think that's a very neat way of displaying frequency because it's obviously much more exciting to have little things vibrating around rather than just having you know, a dial or a frequency counter that says you know, 50 hertz or something like that. And this unit here is quite special, I think, because, um, well, there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, those things were mostly used in, say, generating stations and places where you need to, to know your mains frequency. So usually your frequency meters would only have a small number of reads going, say, from, I don't know, 45 to 55 hertz or something like that just as of giving an indication where your mains frequency is um, whereas this one goes from 45 to 120 hertz and it's really large so normally they would be like little panel meters so I suspect that this one must have been used in some sort of school or university physics lab something like that just sort of from the size the frequency range and you know it just looks like something you would find in a in a physics class also, as a side note, there were purely mechanical versions of these as well to be used as tachometers. So, as I said, this one is for measuring electrical frequencies, but you could also get literally just a bank of reeds without any of the electromagnets, and you could, say, place them on an electric motor and pick up the vibrations from there and hence measure the RPM, but again, that's quite obsolete nowadays. But anyway, that's enough talking about it. I think we should hook it up and have a look at how the vibrating reeds actually look like. Now, as you may guess from the sheer size of it, and as I said, it's an electromagnet inside, it does actually need a fair bit of power to drive it. So I've got this little um, power amplifier box here, which is effectively just a really big um, power up amp. So I'll use that to hook it up to the SIGCHEN or the um, PC sound card to drive it and we can see how, how it looks like once we apply some signals to it. Right, so just to show you the setup, I've got the signal generator here which feeds into the amplifier. The output of that goes onto the oscilloscope so I can see what's going on. And then finally, we also have it going to our frequency meter. And as you can see here, the 100 Hz read is vibrating around quite vigorously at the moment because I'm inputting 100.5 Hertz so it's off a bit but we don't really care about that too much so let's look at that so you can see quite clearly how how that is deflected compared to the other ones who sit, uh, sit still so if I increase the frequency slowly we can see that the vibration gets or the amplitude of the deflection gets lower and lower whilst the one next to it, the 101 Hertz is slowly starting to pick up. So now I'm at 101 Hertz exactly. Remember it was off by about half a Hertz and now both of them are about the same amplitude. 
if I keep going up, 101.1, two, three, you can see the 101 hertz is now growing, and it's hitting its peak about, uh, about here. And so that's how these things um, would look like to an operator. So really, you just have to look out for, you know, which read has the highest deflection, and then read off the frequency. And if there's more than one vibrating, it's you know, sort of somewhere in between. <laughs> and, you know, that's sort of analog, analog um, frequency measurements for you. So, so yeah, that's how those things um, would have worked. Now, there are a few really cool things you can do with these, and I'd just like to show you some of them. One of the main things to realize is that, as I said before, each of these reads has its individual resonant frequency, so it doesn't just read out one frequency, but it can read out multiple frequencies at the same time if you excite multiple reads at the same time. Um, so just to show you a demonstration, I prepared a signal that has three different sine wave components to it. And you can see we have the 70, the 74 and the 101 hertz reads vibrating simultaneously. And you know, effectively this works like a very, very low fidelity spectrum analyzer because you know whichever frequency components you have in your signal will will ultimately excite the reads and you can um, can read that off which I think is really cool because you know you wouldn't have that on a sort of normal single readout frequency counter for example that would just give you a number but not in this case three separate numbers now this fact can be exploited for fun and profit um, because what you can do is you can generate a signal that has varying frequency content depending on what you want to show. So just earlier I prepared a signal that has frequency components between 90 and 120 hertz um, at five different frequencies and the frequency components change as a binary count sequence. So let me just show that to you. So we start off with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on and so forth. So, you know, I have five sort of active frequencies across here, and I can use that to, uh, you know, have a display for a five-bit counter. Now, one thing that's quite important to point out here is that I spaced the reads quite far apart. As I said, because they are mechanical and they are coupled somewhat, controlling two adjacent reads is actually really difficult because they would just couple to each other and uh, you wouldn't get nowhere near as clear a readout as in in this case. But uh, yeah, I think it's just quite an interesting thing to show you how you know, how you can have the most convoluted and obscure sort of digital readout system imaginable by you know, modulating frequency contents and things like that. So I think that's a neat one. And let me also show you something a bit um, less digital and more analog. So what I've got set up now is the frequency generator is outputting 83 hertz, which is just in the center of the entire frequency range here. And I'm now going to enable frequency modulation on that signal with a random uh, modulation signal, so just noise effectively with a very low bandwidth. And let's see what that looks like. So as you can see the frequency starts to move around and because it is moving continuously you have those really beautiful sort of waves propagating along the reeds and it's it's really very beautiful to look at and it's very mesmerizing. It's almost like a you know, like a lava lamp for engineers because, you know, now it's moving really fast and now it's moving slower. It's really very, very beautiful. The other nice thing about that is that, as I said, it's electromechanical. So the whole thing actually vibrates a bit and especially when it moves quite quickly, you can actually hear it quite audibly and the and the desk is vibrating as well. It's really a very sort of beautiful hands-on tactile kind of instrument. So I really love that. But I think we should also have a quick look inside, just to see how it is actually built. 
So the cover comes off really easily and the nice thing is you don't have to remove any of the knobs or anything so you can just leave it the way it was and when we move down here we can see how the actual reeds are constructed. So you can immediately see as we go from lower frequency to higher frequencies they get shorter so um, you know they're sort of clamped in there and the shorter ones obviously have a higher resonant frequency than the than the longer ones. And around there, maybe you can get it from this angle, uh, not so good either, but anyway, you've got all of that here. So that's one big coil wound around this bank of reeds. And if you look on the side, you've got three banks of reeds, each with different coils. And the you know, interesting thing you can see from this angle is that for example, the the ones in the middle here are shorter than these, although they're lower frequency. So clearly, they have you know different uh, stiffnesses or other mechanical properties that changes the resonant frequency. But yeah, you just imagine how much time and effort it must have taken to get all of this you know set up and tuned, especially. So I'm sure that these are more or less hand tuned. If you look here, uh, you know, I'm not sure if you can see that. There's a number scribbled on there, so I presume that means that they have done some tuning and everything. And obviously the whole thing is handmade, so on the back here you've got you know, a transformer for a different input ranges and, and the sensitivity switch that's all hand-wired, all of that is you know, clearly handmade. Because you know you have made in Czechoslovakia 1982, uh, yeah, labor wasn't they? A big question back then, and probably not much automation going on there. But yeah, really, really nice, really beautiful. And yeah, I think that's just a really nice example of a sort of completely obsolete and not that well known anymore uh, electromechanical measurement device. So, so yeah, I really hope you, you enjoyed this video and uh, maybe even learned something from it. And let me know if you like this kind of stuff, and I hope I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.